we'll be using inside that particular stuff. Uh, we'll be going through a little bit boring kind of uh, presentation, but certainly we'll have a demo as well. And uh, certainly I won't ask you to wait for end of the session to like finish uh, ask questions. If you have any questions, please, I think you can ask me. Stop me in between. Ask me if I'm not getting deviated from the questions or maybe from the topic, then we'll certainly answer. Otherwise, we'll see how can we answer in the uh, offline mode. OK, so let's see. Uh, so I am Muhammad Ibrahim Ansari and I have been working on a lot of stuff. I have a developer background as well as DevOps as well as mobile, etc. Uh, but uh, I love learning about technology and I always feel like people who have any questions about technology or people want to share something certainly connect with me and I would be available for you. So this is my Twitter handle. Uh, you can go there and certainly ask me for help. So let me go to the slide number two. OK, sorry, I am presenting to teams. Can you see the slide number two, please? I just want to confirm because I don't want you to see something else and you know I'm speaking something else. Uh, can you see the second slide continuous integration? Yeah. OK, yes. Yep. Cool, so before uh, starting with uh, uh, Jenkins tool, like let's start about or let's talk about why do we use Jenkins? Right. Why do we use Jenkins? There are a lot of tools available in market. Uh, there is uh, you know, Circle CI, there are uh, Azure DevOps, other things, right? Uh, but Jenkins is a very good open source, self contained automation server, which can be used to automate all sorts of tasks related to building, testing, delivering, and deploying the software. Uh, this uh, and and before that, if you see Jenkins has more inclination to, uh, with automation, it also has inclination towards the continuous integration and continuous delivery as well as deployment side. Let's talk about continuous integration, CI, CD. We all talk about CI, CD, CI, CD. What is that? Right. Uh, continuous integration, if you see the definition, it's, it's, it says that it's a development practice that requires developers to integrate code into a shared repository several times a day, right? I mean, that's the ideal scenario. We work in a company, we are an organization where we have our colleagues, we are working on the same project, same repository, and we check in a lot of stuff together. Uh, and then what happens, one, one guy checks in something and things get broken. How do you fix that, right? I mean, sometimes we realize when we are trying to deploy that time we realize, oh, after the deployment, we come to know, oh, something is wrong. Oh, and then we start doing the postmortem analysis. Who broke the code? Continuous integration with the help of continuous, continuous integration, you can actually get an actual feedback, right? A quick feedback that, oh, oh, there is something wrong. You need to fix it. So what happens? The developer goes, checks in the code into source control. There is an automated build which is pulling the source code, building it, testing it, making some uh, like stages which the user has defined as a part of the workflow and give the feedback immediately. So if I check in something and if it is breaking up, people will come to know, even I'll come to know. So that's something like continuous integration where your code has been built and tested and giving you a feedback properly quite often. Let me go to the next screen, which is, I hope it works fine. Let me see. Okay. Continuous deployment, right? Uh, continuous deployment is a strategy where for software releases wherein any code commit that passes through the automated testing is automatically released into production, making changes that are visible to software users. That means you check in something, it, if it is built successfully, if it is if all the test cases are successfully uh, like executed, then there you just deploy it to the production and things are like woo. I mean, you might have heard about companies who are doing this, right? They say that we do like so many deployments uh, in a day, right? So that is being done through continuous deployment. But there is also a catch, right? I mean, there is always a, a fear of, you know, losing things like checking before the deployment uh, that things are whether things are good, bad or something has gone wrong. I mean, even the integration test passes or the UI test passes, there is something called human intervention, which is certainly required sometimes, right? If you are actually working on a mission critical applications. So let's talk about that. And that is continuous delivery. And if you see, assume that everything is good, everything is good, that it is absolutely like the previous one. The only difference is once the automated tests are done, it says that you know we are good to go live. There is a small manual intervention or human intervention required in order to deploy it to production. 
just kind of an approval that is called continuous delivery that does not deploy till the production till the time somebody actually says that okay i'm good and i am i, I, I like i give you a green signal to go ahead so that's the difference between ci cd cd right and uh, let's again th go through a small i i found this uh, uh uh, image on internet and it was really really nice and I think, I think it explains what I'm trying to explain through my words which may be not good uh, but it's like continuous delivery versus continuous deployment see if everything is good 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 it wins to staging okay the only difference is one is automatic the other one is manual right so I think this is a very clear picture which explains it very well why do I love Jenkins I mean a uh, lot of people love Jenkins uh, uh, can you see the screen right now? Yes. yes, you can see. OK, sorry, I my network is a little bit fluctuating, so I'm sorry about it. OK, so why do I love Jenkins? OK, it's an open source project. A lot of people are contributing it actively. Uh, thousand of plugins are available. I should not say thousand. In fact, I should say hundred thousand plugins are available. Uh, when, when I say plugin, which is like more of integration with other tools and services, right? So if you see third point, it says integrates with many tools and services. A new, new technology comes into picture, like example, Docker, Kubernetes, or something. People create a plugin out of it. People or company or open source people create a plugin out of it, and we can simply just use that plugin in our Jenkins, and we are just ready with our uh, usage or deployment or building the tool especially tailored to ci cd like as i said it is more more people are more focusing on the ci cd part and i think it's a very uh, efficient tool to implement ci cd in an environment or in an organization history of ci cd with jenkins right i mean uh Earlier, I, we will go through that. I will once this boring deck is completed, uh, we'll go through a small demo of how a simple Jenkins job looks like. And I think most of you might have already seen how a simple job looks like. And then why it, and what are the challenges of those particular jobs, right? Uh, I'll give you an example when there was an implementation of pipeline, like not this pipeline, but an older build pipeline using jobs. OK, so they we used to have downstream jobs, which is like something like job A, B, C and D and job. If if job A successfully executes, then it triggers the job B. If it executes, then it used to trigger job C and then similarly it used to trigger. Sorry for the mistake, but it triggers job D and that's how it was. And if you see this plugin on the next page on the PBD, it is the typical or build pipeline in a pre pipeline era stage. So all these things which you see in the green boxes right now is nothing but it is a job. So job uh, job reference compile integration test analysis, blah, 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 blah. So once you run this pipeline, the first job will be executed if it is successful, so on, so on, so on. I mean, it becomes cumbersome to manage things as well because what is happening right now here is excuse me. What is happening right now here is you are depending on that particular job. There are different dependencies on job and everything is like separated, right? So that's how it is. And I would certainly like to jump to the Jenkins screen right now, but yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's jump on the Jenkins screen. I need to stop sharing or maybe I'll share the Jenkins screen. OK. <clears throat> Excuse me. Guys, can you see the Jenkins instance right now with the end to end old uh, screen? Can somebody yes. confirm? Yeah, yes. OK, yeah. cool. So this is a Jenkins instance which I have actually spinned up on an Azure. Uh, con uh, container. So uh, I uh, created an Azure VM. I installed a Docker on that and then I like spin up a Jenkins or Dockerized instance of Jenkins and that's what I'm using it right now here. And uh, before we go about anything, before we go about the freestyle job or something, uh, let me talk about the end to end pipeline like this, right? The older way of doing things. So job A and job B, right? So if you see when I click on the job A, it said downstream projects like 
so as i if you saw in the pre presentation there was something called downstream that means that this job b is dependent on job a like once job a is executed successfully please process job b and i can show you uh, don't worry about what am i doing i don't even know how to create a job what is he doing right now so that's okay uh, we'll see so job a was the moment job a gets done the job b will so it's here so if you see upstream projects that is also part of that is showing the connection to job a which was on the top this was the pipeline which uh, connected connected the job a as well as job b and i executed job a and immediately if you see i think it was pretty fast job b is in build queue right because job a got executed in the pipeline and then job b it was waiting for job b to get executed so this was the problem like multiple jobs and multiple scenarios now switching it out of it let's create a simple jenkins job how jenkins can help us for this is for people who really don't know what jenkins is okay so this is a jenkins dashboard there are different options available here i will go to the new item option and i will create the first job let's say freestyle type one one freestyle job gives you an ui which actually you can choose drop down or uh, choose options from drop down drag and drop things and create your job based on your needs and similarly there are different type of jobs available we'll go through pipeline and we'll certainly try to go through the multi branch pipeline as well after the session so freestyle let's create okay i want a freestyle kind of job can you please help me with that okay so there you go you can provide description there are different options right now the most important option right now would be a uh, you know a source code management like where do you want to fetch the code from so you can put a repository url here like for example let's go to github okay so let's go to github and take a very simple uh, repository so I forked this repository from somewhere and let's take this. Let's copy the clone URL and let's put that here. OK, as it is an uh, open uh, repository, we don't need a credentials to provide. Certainly now it asks you, how do you want to trigger the build? As we always say, you know what, uh, that it should always the moment there is a check in in the job, there should the job should always get triggered, right? How does that work? That works through a webhook. So we have connected Jenkins as well as GitHub in order to make sure that the moment there is a check in in the GitHub repository, it automatically fires a, a trigger or a hook on the Jenkins side saying that, excuse me, there is someone who has checked in on this particular project. Can you please run the build for them? Right. So these are the different options. You can certainly use build periodically, giving that schedule. Like you, if, if there are jobs, right? You know, some cron jobs which you actually want to run uh, periodically, every night or maybe every weekend or something like that. So if you want to do that, you can certainly put the schedule here. Uh, let's skip that right now and let's go to the build step, which is the actual uh, uh, executor, which is gonna do something for us. So let's click on build step and there are different options available based on the plugins you have installed so these are like default the more and more plugins you install the more options you will get in this drop down for example here we have docker if i install a kubernetes plugin i will show you where the plugin installer is where to get the plugins from but i'm just giving an example if we have a kubernetes plugin installed we can certainly get an option here to do something there okay uh, never mind. Let's start with a simple execute shell and we'll say echo. Hello world. Right. OK, if my screen lags, just let me know if I'm not in sync with the screen. I'm saving this. And once I save it, I will on the left hand side, I get an option called build now. So let's build it. What it's going to do is it's going to download that source code for us and then run a simple command. It's not even building right now. OK, it will download. So if you see it cloned the repository from this URL. 
right? And then it tried to execute the first build step which we said, of which was echo hello world, and that's what it did. That's what you specified a simple thing. It did a simple thing for you. Nothing else. Now coming back to anatomy of this particular freestyle job or making you aware of how Jenkins a uh, few things of few uh, what do you call terminologies of Jenkins work. There is something called workspace. Workspace is nothing, but it is a place where you ex actually uh, do your builds. So when you download anything like uh, you did a clone of that repository, right? Then this workspace gets uh, populated. So if you see whatever was there in the GitHub repository has been downloaded because we had asked, OK, see this wrapper main Java. And then when we come here. Oh, sorry, here these are the things available. OK, so this is how a freestyle job looks like now. What, what happens like there are number of projects in your organization. You cannot just go and start creating uh, freestyle jobs directly by saying new project and you know uh, changing the URL and all those things are like manual. For example, if I have to create a similar job for a different repository, what I can do? Uh, there might be people who know Jenkins. They might say that you know what uh, you can certainly copy it. It's very easy even if it is like a lot of code. You can still copy it so I can actually go here. And I can say freestyle to freestyle project. And here I can tell which job I want to copy. So I'll say freestyle, maybe one. And I can say OK. This will completely copy everything which I have on the screen, right? So if you see, I did not specify anything. It automatically copied the same thing from the job. Everything has been copied, right? But there would be a lot of projects. There would be a lot of projects. There would be a lot of repositories. There would be a lot of settings and for everything you need to make sure that it is well audited as well as well checked by your team reviewed, right? Whatever you do or create as a job, it has to be reviewed. If you do something in the execution of the job, it has to be reviewed. So that actually also creates the importance of the Jenkins pipeline or pipeline as code because you're writing a file uh, in a, you're writing a, a code in a text file which can be saved in a source control system which can be reviewed which can be actually compared and see what is the difference it actually gives you a lot of flexibility and before for that let's again switch back to the uh, presentation mode excuse me Cool. So if you see it says pipeline, what is pipeline? So every check in triggers a pipeline execution feedback to the team in every stage. Earlier job also used to give bring the pain forward, fa fail fast and fail often. Allow multiple users to edit and execute the pipeline process. So you define your own processes, right? Irrespective of those drop downs and other things, you just write whatever you want. Uh, pipelines are robust, so even if there is a system restart or something happens, and if it is in the execution phase, it will pause and it will be restarted automatically when the system or the instance comes up. You can pause the process and make it to uh, resume by uh, user input. We will certainly have a small demo on that. How to do that? You can review and audit your Jenkins pipeline code and, and trust me guys. This is the very important point here because you can review and audit because you will be defining the whole pipeline as in the uh, uh, the flow of how your code will flow from a developer's machine till the time it is being deployed on the server or on the production server. So that is a very important thing in a, any small thing. If you miss, it could be a disaster, right? And when we do the freestyle job, certainly we have a lot of chances of doing a human error and actually getting something missed. And but in Jenkins pipeline, as it is source controlled, any everything goes through a review process. Uh, you can certainly restart a few uh, ch from checkpoints. Uh, we'll talk about that maybe once we start the demo and integrate with other plugins easily. So as I mentioned when we started that there are a lot of plugins available and it is easily integrated with that uh, whenever a new technology or when a new uh, uh, system comes into picture. What is Jenkins file? Uh, a text file that stores pipeline as code. It can be checked into your source control. We talked about it. Enable developers the flexibility of changing the file as per process. 
it is written in a groovy DSL. For people who don't know DSL, domain specific language, uh, written. There are two type of syntaxes how it is being written. One is the declarative syntax and one is the scripted pipeline syntax. And we will uh, like see most of the times we will be working on the declarative pipeline because it gives you a lot of functionality which we talk about, which we'll talk about and which we'll see in the demos uh, as well as uh, scripted pipeline is also powerful, but it is like a lot of uh, strict groovy code which you need to follow. So let me move to the other stuff just to give you an overall description. You don't have to really, really worry about. OK, I have to learn two things. Nothing. You just have to learn one thing. Uh, declarative pipeline. It's been recent. It's been trend. It's been a lot of it's been used by a lot of organization as well as people. Simple groovy syntax code is written locally into a file and then checked into SCM. SCM stands for source control management. That means it could be GitHub. It could be your Azure DevOps, etc. Right, and then the code is defined within the pipeline block. So that means when you write start writing the uh, declarative pipeline, you just make sure that you start with pipeline block. We'll see that on the other side. Scripted pipeline is a traditional way of writing code. It was introduced earlier. It has a strict groovy syntax. Code is written on Jenkins UI. Uh, trust me, it was as per definition. So I I, I got this like uh, two comparison from a definition of from a site, right? But actually having the real experience if you see you can actually write scripted pipeline into a Jenkins file as well as the declarative pipeline on the Jenkins UI. I'm talking something which is like you haven't seen yet, so just bear. Uh, and the code is defined usually with a node block. <coughs> Excuse me. Pipeline concepts. So when we start writing a pipeline, uh, we need to understand some nomenclature of pipeline. What is that? So there is something called pipeline, a user defined block. So it's like this. If you go into the previous se uh, section where I wrote the code is defined with pipeline block, right? So that would be totally different in this case because here <clears throat> we start with pipeline for uh, uh, all the stages, whatever we are going to define in the pipeline will start with pipeline. And uh, for the scripted one, we start with node. So we just say node and also we can define all the stages uh, as a part of this particular pipeline block. Then there is a very important thing called agent and by the name, name suggest agent is nothing but is an executor. Uh, you might have heard about the master slave con configuration of uh, Jenkins. If not, then let me explain you. Uh, Jenkins has a master who has who's the owner who actually executes everything uh, not executes gives commands to people or the uh, agents or you can say slave slave is a bad word which not use it uh, but uh, it's like worker nodes let's take it as master and worker nodes right uh, i'll give you a scenario there might be possibility that you there are few jobs which are dotnet related jobs there are few jobs which are ios related jobs right so when you try to run a uh, 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 a simple job with dotnet code on a linux machine it might break right so you will certainly like to execute that particular code into a windows box what you need to do is you need to spin at least three different agents if you have the scenario okay one agent would be a windows machine the other agent would be a linux machine and the uh, and the third one would be a mac machine right for ios and then you need to instruct the jenkins file or jenkins that you know what for this particular execution of code, I want to use agent named as macOS, right? So whenever the job actually executes, it actually looks for, okay, there, is there any Mac agent available with the name Mac? So then if it is, then it will start executing there. So if you see it has following parameters, it has none, any, label, and Docker. Any means yeah, actually you can just say, uh, any available agent irrespective of uh, any platform, anything, whatever is available, just execute my code on that. There would be scenarios. Uh, none as in you want to specify different nodes or uh, different worker nodes or different agents for different stages in your, for example, for building, you want to run it on a Windows machine. For testing, you want it to run on a, a Linux machine. I mean a hypothetical scenario, right? So that can be done by using the nonstick keyword. Then label. Label is nothing but just 
telling that agent which block uh, sorry which uh, agent you should pick up agent one mac os or whatever docker there is this is a very good feature because i realized when i was using when we started using docker uh, there was machines where we for example will i want to spin up a docker container which is a maven which has a maven image right and i have to execute maven code and my J jenkins does not have maven installed my machine does not have maven installed what i do i use this keyword and then i immediately it spins up a docker container for me which has maven installed and i execute my code there so we'll have a small snippet demo on that as well now coming back to this so we started from <clears throat> excuse me i think there's a lag okay we started from uh, the pipeline block after pipeline block we added an agent so just actually focus on the images the black images which i have right now in the pipeline block we added agents right that this is the agent i want to execute on after that i said stages right so these are the different stages so there are two things stages as well as steps let's talk about what is stages stages is nothing but it contains all the work which has been segregated or which has been grouped into a uh, different stage like uh, checkout for checkout process we can use a stage uh, called checkout with for build related work we can use a stage called build so on so on deploy monitor and this is user given name as in you will define these names this is like free flow or you can define or you can choose whatever process you have and you can just give that name there uh, and similarly after defining the stages you will have to tell the stage what it has to do and for that you use something called steps okay and if you see i've just taken a small demo a uh, small example of echo i mean it's not doing anything it's just echoing uh, things for me so that is running checkout phase running build phase running test phase and so on so on coming back to the other step is <clears throat> creating your first pipeline file so first pipeline file of yours will look like this just a minute. I think it's loading up. It should have come. OK, creating your first pipeline file. It looks like this. Uh, you have a pipeline block at the start. You start with an agent new any. That means you want to you know, execute on anything, any available agent, right? And then you define stages. In stages, you have right now three build stages, like build, test, and deploy right three stages and let's and to learn anything like what i always feel like if you want to learn anything let's get your hands dirty so it's time to do that and let me start with the uh, first initial writing of creating your first jenkins file and we will see how things are working and how we create and you know progress uh, step by step i'll try to cover a lot of features and other functionalities let's see how much we can focus on so let me open the tab for you guys. Just a minute, I'll put it on. Okay. Uh, I think it should be up. So I have opened Visual Studio Code and on Visual Studio Code, I am writing a Jenkins file just to make sure that everyone understands. So let's try with pipeline as we dis uh, as we discussed and we saw that the first thing which we will define is a pipeline block, right? And then it would be an agent, right? Then it would be an agent. What kind of agent we want? So for the sake of like making it quick, let's say Jenkins that your pipeline that you know what any available agent you just execute my code. I'm OK with this. The next step which we saw in the presentation was stages, right? So just see it is so easy to create stages in stages block. We will have different stages, right? So let's start with the first stage. And we will just write stage. We will give a name to the stage. Um, let's say check out 
so i usually usually that is the first step right i mean if you're working on any source code you will certainly like that source code to be downloaded first on your machine and then you will be doing anything or operation any operation or build on that right so let's take an example of that let's say okay i have a stage now what let's define the step so let's define a step inside it okay and then we will just say for now we'll just say echo hello world that's it this is the simplest pipeline file you can ever see in your life like this is something really really easy okay and let me put it on the uh, on a job so let's let's create a job first Okay. Let's create pipeline job one. Okay. And then we will create this. Earlier we created a freestyle project. This time we'll create a pipeline job. Right. And then we'll say okay. So if you see the options have changed. The options have changed and the options earlier, the source control management and other stuff all has gone right now. You're only left with build triggers, advanced project options that also like you have only the display name in there. And then this is something called pipeline script, the scripted pipeline. If you remember the scripted pipeline, when I say you can just directly uh, write the scripts here as well as you get an option of getting the pipeline from SCM that means source control management where we need to provide what kind of uh, source code it is whether it is Git or blah 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 usually it supports Git. let's talk about the first thing let's see and try to execute what we have created so if you remember just now we created pipeline we said okay any agent take any stages oh sorry let's define the stages Let's the that's the first stage be check out SCM and that will do nothing but it will say hello world and I think that's what we did in the first freestyle job. I will save this and I will try to execute this and let, let's see what happens. I mean demo always fails, so I'm always scared about it, but let's see. Oh, it successfully executed. OK. So if you see this, it says hello world and that's what we did, right? But notice one thing. I mean, I've been saying so many good things about Jenkins pipeline and you know, so bad UI man. I mean, it's it's, it's really, really bad. Sometimes you feel OK, he has done something uh, good, but I cannot see uh, the UI is really bad, right? I mean, it's not attractive. You can see the logs here like this, whatever you did, the job did or whatever the stage did. But there is something called Blue Ocean plugin. OK, now I've been talking about plugin, plugin, plugin. Let's talk about the plugin part first and then we'll move to the what is Blue Ocean. So we can go on the top level of Jenkins. We can go to manage Jenkins. We can go to uh, so if you see the fourth, fifth option or sixth option is manage plugins. OK, so if you see there are available installed and advanced options available will have all the uh, plugins which I haven't installed yet, but it is available for me to install. So if you see PowerShell, other stuff like I was talking about Kubernetes, let's search for Kubernetes. See Kubernetes is also available, blah, blah, blah. So let's go to the installed plugins and I was talking about the Blue Ocean plugin, right? Blue Ocean plugin is nothing but it is a plugin which gives a wonderful UI and very intuitive stuff to Jenkins and actually gives life to Jenkins. So because of the Blue Ocean plugins, let's see the difference. Right now, uh, excuse me, refresh this. Pipeline job one. Yeah, this was the one which we did right now. OK, so instead of this, if I tell you that there's a better UI, the moment you install Blue Ocean plugin, 
you get an option open blue ocean here. Now click on it. It will open you a new URL on the same thing. If you see blue organizations, Jenkins and the job, and you will actually see the difference. This looks like this. OK, so activity I will click on it. And I can actually see what happened. I had one stage, right? It started, it ended and this was successfully passed. I can click on it. I get this option. I can expand this and I can check. Actually, this gives me an exact representation of where what happened, where it happened and how can I just you know pinpoint it or zero down the error. I will show you in the when we add more stages to it how it looks. There is one more thing which I would like to talk about here is a very good option on Jenkins pipeline, which is a replay option. OK, when I say replay option, you can actually whatever code you wrote in the pipeline, you can replay and change it. So once you click on that replay button, the same code which you ran in this particular uh, last or the last build will be shown to you. And now you can change or you can add steps to it. So let me in interest of time just copy it. And just add few more blocks here. Let me make it build. Let me make it build and instead of echo hello world, let me say. Building. Similarly, it's, it's very simple guys. I mean, it looks very easy as well, right? I mean, I don't know how much you guys are like. If you have any questions, please ask me here as well. I need to know whether it has been followed or not. Right? Uh, maybe testing. We will add more blocks to it, but it's just like to give you a better uh, understanding like how easy the stages or steps can be created. And then let's have one more thing called deploy. Right? And we'll say deploy. And let's run it. So if you notice, I ran it from the replay option. And now I got the three stages again. So here let's see it in a better UI. I think now we'll be used to the new and better UI of Jenkins. So I, if you see the message, it says I have replayed the first one. So here if you see check out SCM, build, test, deploy. I mean compare this. And this there's a huge difference. Now assume that we want to check that what is the uh, steps which were performed. What are the steps which were performed in build? I will click on build. The moment I click on build, all the things which has been done in build will be populated here. So I'll click here and I'll see it just echoed building because that's what it was doing. Similarly, in case of error, we don't need to go through this Jenkins logs to understand what went wrong or right. Right? This is what is it is printing here. So instead of this and understanding which stage it was, I can directly go here and I can click on that stage and I can understand. OK, something was good. Uh, something was uh, wrong here and I can actually click on that and I can easily see those things. Let's add some more good things about this particular. Um, uh, like demo, let's add some more stages. And for that, let me add a real checkout phase, right? Let me add. Let me go to Git. And let's take a simple example again. And make this pipeline actually working. OK. This is a very good Gradle uh, plug uh, code, which I have actually forked from the Gradle quick scan repository and let's copy it. And this time let's do a replay again. Let's play with it. That becomes easy in, in terms of like going back to the uh, editor. This is easy. Let's do it here. So this time we'll say in the checkout space, just do. Download this, right? I'll say download this, but what? I don't know. I have the URL, but I don't know how to write the step, right? 
Jenkins gives you that flexibility as well. I mean, the pipeline gives you that flexibility as well. And how does that give? If you see, there is something called pipeline syntax, right? I have the URL, but I don't know. I don't know the step how to use that particular uh, code to in order to download that repository. In in the freestyle job, I had an option where I selected Git, and then it asked me which repository, blah blah blah. And that time it was easy for me, but now I don't know. What I'll do, I'll click on the snippet generator. Okay, I'll click on the snippet generator. It's a very nice tool. Whatever plugins you install, you can actually generate a snippet out of it, right? So, for example, I want to go to Git because I want to download, play with the Git operations. I will say Git. It asked me the same option if you saw in the first page, right? And I will say, okay, this is the repository. This would be the branch. I'm not putting credentials right now because uh, it's an open one for me. And I'll say, okay, generate pipeline code. This will give me what has to be put there. I'll copy this. I'll put here and see this. This replay is also very smart. I mean, it understood that there is something wrong here. This is not the syntax, right? So it gave me an error. And I will just replace that. OK, the error goes away and let's run it and let's see what happens. So this time what I expect is the checkout phase should have run and after the checkout phase running the checkout phase, the uh, code might have been downloaded. So let's click on the third one to check what happened. OK, so many things happened. It actually downloaded the repository. Let me go to the favorite one like my Jenkins Blue Ocean plugin and actually see here. And check out SCM. See. This got downloaded and that's what I want to see. I want to see. I don't want to go through all these logs here rather than I can actually you know, click here and I can find what exactly happened in that particular step. I think I'm too much boasting about this, the blue ocean. So that's my favorite. Uh, having said that, let me add a few more. And maybe uh, anybody of uh, in the audience, somebody would like to add one more stage here. OK. Maybe people are uh, it's afternoon time, so I think post lunch analysis. I understand. OK, uh, let me build now and in build. Let's go to the repository and I am very bad with Gradle. OK, Gradle Maven, I don't like. So let's understand what is the build step. I have a repository. What do we need to execute? OK, we need to execute this step. It says Gradle build hyphen hyphen scan. OK, so let's do a shell script and call the shell script to run this. So we will say echo building and we will say SH. SH stands for calling the shell script. And please build this application. And again, we'll run this. And slowly, slowly, that's what we are doing is we are actually trying to execute different flexibility uh, of those options which the Jenkins declarative pipeline has provided. Cool. Let's see what is happening. Actually, we should see it from here. We missed it. OK. So let's see what happened in build. Last time I was interested in checkout. This time I'm interested in build and I want to see if the build happened. Actually, the everything is green. Looks like build happened and this was the stage which was executed. So I can just click on that particular step. I can see OK, compile Java, blah, 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 blah. These tests have been executed. Tasks have been executed and my build was successful. There is also a replay button here which actually reruns the same thing, same uh, commit again. OK, it's not happy with me or what? Okay, let's see. It already replayed, but let me do it rerun again because I want to check that. Yeah, I want to show you this. This is how exactly it ha uh, it works. If build is taking time, it will show that I am on builds 
phase so it does not actually make you uh, make it a, the process as a black box it exactly shows you what it is doing inside that particular box which is the step is it executing right now if it is at, if it is stuck at some point of time or a place it will tell you that i am still moving on build and it is taking this much time now having said that let's 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 create one more thing about here there is something called parallel execution so whatever you saw here is a sequential one right you are doing checkout scm you are doing build you are doing test one after another what if jenkins also gives you uh, pipeline gives you a flexibility of executing parallel stages what if you want to execute parallel stages what do you do because there might be a time where if uh, you are actually uh, running a test case example and uh, you want to run it at the same moment at for ie uh, internet explorer for chrome for firefox etc certainly you don't need to be like staying for like you know waiting for the other uh, test to be completed in order to run the other one you can actually run those things in parallel so i have a snippet for that as well let me let me this in interest of time i'll just copy that okay let me take that out for a parallel stage so let's replay it again and while build is happening let me paste up stage called parallel stage okay or maybe let's say parallel test stage right and there is a keyword called parallel so if you see everything remains the same just a parallel keyword has been added in that parallel stage uh, st uh, stage you have all these stage a stage b whichever you want to run as a part of parallel branch so maybe let's say ie sorry branch a executing branch a executing branch b and then let's run it and if you come here there you go <clears throat> so if you notice here checkout was happened build happened and then there was a parallel testing of branch a branch b or maybe you can say internet explorer or something else a b c and you can execute things in parallel right so that is also a very good functionality by uh, the uh, Jenkins pipeline. Then we will talk about a timeout function. I mean, you might have always oh. seen that. Yeah. Any question, someone? Before that, Imran, yeah, I have one question. Sure. Sorry for the interruption in between. Sure, no problem. That's fine. So my my question is uh, like uh, when we deal with a parallel uh, mm -hmm. in this, this pipeline or uh, right parallel plugin. So how the back Around works actually. I mean, two demons will pick the the same stage at a one time and run it simultaneously. Or, or, yes, or, yes, or, exactly. So basically, it will just start. So it is just like this, right? I mean, it, there's a process running. It will split mm -hmm. that process into two, right? One, for example, you're calling two sites. You're calling Google.com as well as your Facebook.com, right? One mm -hmm. process immediately will split into two and it will one will call the Google.com and the other one will call uh, Facebook.com irrespective of each other. They will execute okay. in isolation like there is no connection of it might happen that branch A this might fail, right? That doesn't mm -hmm. mean this will also fail. This will execute and this will move ahead. Maybe it will get stuck here because this guy failed, right? But okay. it is actually mm -hmm. working in isolation and independently. So there's no uh, uh, dependency on that. OK, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. So thank you for that question and let's go to the timeout. So there are many times where we actually wait for an execution, right? For example, we call a script and we are waiting for the response. Uh, maybe there is a bad job and we are waiting for a response. It, and then due to some intermittent issues, there are uh, times when we don't have to uh, wait for that long. We just want to say that, you know what? If this takes this much time, then just skip it, right? So that functionality is also available. So let me take out. Let me add that here. Let me put it here in a step. OK. 
Okay, no, let me write it down just a minute. Okay. Ideal scenario would be. Can you put this in uh, Visual Studio Code? Like ah, oh, really? Somebody? Okay, that would be very nice. I'll do that. Yeah, it is very difficult to write here because I think so. It, it, it is, is like terrible. Uh, it is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know which uh, key system it uses or keyboard system it uses. Okay, there you go. So maybe with this will sound or look much better. Uh, because of the actual plugin stuff. Anyways, okay. So no mind. So this is the checkout stage. First one, the build stage, the stage in parallel. The parallel was executed and then this was executed and then there was a test stage and then deploy stage. I was trying to add. Okay. Let me add that step here. Okay, cool. So this is being copied well. Cool. So let me add a timeout uh, option, which says that you know what, uh, you should wait for three seconds. And if it if the time taken by that particular process which you are running inside this particular block is more than this time, just you know uh, stop it just don't just move ahead and just break the build so if you see here time is three i've taken three seconds in order to make sure that you know uh, we are good with time and we i have just added to execute like increase the timeout process so that i just said sleep for five seconds in shell and let's copy this uh, moving from window to window is actually creating a problem for me guys so Sorry, bear with it. And I've copied the same content which we wrote in visual uh, code here. And let's go there as well. Did you notice? Right? So did you notice it came on the build part and then it just move on the other uh, like it directly went into the end. And we need to understand why. So we'll click on build. Right? We clicked on build and we saw that something has been aborted. So this line which you see is called aborted. And you saw that sending interruption signal to process terminated because we had given a sleep time for five and we have put a condition there in the pipeline that if the timeout of this particular execution is three uh, three seconds. If it takes more than three seconds, then it is just uh, like just skip it and just stop the execution of the particular pipeline. So this is called with timeline. Uh, sorry, timeout. Uh, sorry guys, I'll just use this again here. Uh, there is one more thing which I don't want to go to Visual Studio Code right now because otherwise it will be again time consuming. Sorry about it. We will we'll do it again on Visual Studio Code if you want. There's something called retry options as well that if you are actually so there are many times which ha happens that you are running something and there are intermittent issues, right? Or sometimes you are waiting for something. It is not getting completed like timeout. So the retry option gives you an option to wait or to try not wait. Sorry to try things by the count which the user has provided in the script and see if those count overpasses then it absolutely fails and you know move ahead. So we'll run the code again.
Okay, I think it was the Docker was already present in that. <laughs> Just a minute. It was in build. OK, so Docker was already present. That's why it didn't break. But uh, let me give something else. Or maybe something which might break it. Cool. So there you go. If you see with the retry command, it tried three times, right? It tried first time it got an error. Second time it got an error. When third time also it got an error, it actually skipped the build and bro uh, broke it, like failed it. So that, that's what retry is. There are a lot of options like this. I have chosen which are like very, very important right now and which actually gives a very good understanding of how you can plan and you can create your Jenkins file. Uh, coming back to that, I would also like to add a stage called deployment stage, which has already been added here, but let's make it more, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, very uh, intuitive and meaningful. So let's go, and this time I'm going to use Visual Studio Code so that people understand what's going to happen in that particular script. Pick that up from here. Let me go to visual code. And let me share the screen. This is really. Cool. OK, checkout happened, build happened, testing happened in a parallel stage. Let's remove this test, in fact. Let's remove this test part so that you don't get confused and for the stage deploy let's add some more meaningful input let's say there are there is a stage called deploy and we want to add a authority like it might happen that the build pipeline is automatically running but it wants to it wants a human input you know just i showed you in the continuous delivery side right that it certainly needs a uh, human input in order to deploy it to production or deploy it to. So if you want to interact with the user, if you want to take its input as well as if you want to understand uh, what the user, uh, whether your user wants it to move ahead or not, we can ask user few inputs and that is done using an input command, which is something like this. So in here, in the uh, deploy to dev code, I will just write a snippet called input. What it did, what it does, sorry, is input. What message do you want to ask the user? So here I want to ask whether you want to deploy. Let's make it deploy to dev. Whether you want to make a deploy it to dev. The will there will be buttons which is OK and about. About is by default, so it is not listed here. And it is just like OK, so yes, we should or maybe yes, because this will be displayed on that particular button. Submitter, this is a very good option because this actually controls the security. Who can actually say yes or no? In a particular typical uh, environment in an organization, what happens? The developers are not allowed to deploy it or does not have deploy rights to the production environment or maybe deployment in a uh, QA environment. It might happen that the manager, the release manager, delivery manager or the analyst might have those rights, right? They, they are authorized. So we can put their user ID if they are using AD or maybe Jenkins user ID as well as we can also add the AD group. For example, there is a list of uh, approvers who approves the code or maybe uh, who approves the deployment. Then we can add it here. For now, I've just added my name and the admin role. And then we can also ask some input from the user. Like, you know what? I, For example, I have just when there, this will be asked, it will also give you a pop up 
or with comment whether you want to add something or not. By default, I've just written merge to PR and then we will see how this works. So as per the code, it should actually ask the user the moment it comes to this stage. It should ask the user. Excuse me. Do you want to deploy to dev? Do you want to execute this stage? Because testing has been completed. Everything has been good or whatever previous stages has been completed. Uh, yes or a bot. The user will accordingly take the decision and things will happen. So I've copied the same thing here. And then I'll say run. Let's go to the UI. OK. Uh, let's remove the other part as well, which is the retry option with wrong input. So let me remove that from here. So we are removing this because this didn't work well for us. I mean, this will obviously break the code. Let's rerun it again. OK. So right now if you see it has been waiting for something. It says that you know what everything has been passed. Things are good. Uh, it's pretty green right now, but it is waiting for the user input, waiting for interactive input. And here the input box which you had like added there to take the comment. You can also add something here. And you can either abort or either say yes. If I say abort, this will build will be aborted here and it will skip the deployment to deploy to dev, dev uh, uh, stage. If I say yes, then it will execute that stage. So let's abort first. So if you saw this got aborted with this sign. Similarly, if I'll redo it, replay it. It will again come and this time let's accept it and see what happens. By the time this happens, anybody can ask questions if they have. OK, let's accept this. And please, yeah, so deploy to dev has been executed now. So that's how the interactive input from the user uh, helps. It helps to take input as well as it helps to take uh, decisions by the approvers. It could be like most of the times it is approver uh, that who do you want to do this? Do you want to do that, etc. Right, let me see my deck first. What else I did do have for you? Uh, OK. So let's go back. Yep. Any questions, guys? Yeah, I, I actually have a question here for the uh, inputs. Uh, can it be done uh, via email as well? Like so, for example, like at uh, that stage, uh, email is sent to those okay. users and uh, there will be some uh, like a, a link. So say, say if you want to approve it, uh, there'll be a link. And if he uh, hits that, it will like, you know, directly move to the next step without the user actually going into the Jenkins interface and all of that, like something like that. Okay. OK, very good question. Yeah, that makes sense that uh, you know what? I don't want the user to come here and you know I can send an email. Certainly using the email, you can uh, actually send uh, details so the you will send the details of that particular project to that particular user asking because it is a custom email. You can generate it and you can say that you know what? This is the link. Please approve or reject build based on your uh, decision. That person at least has to come on this portal to make sure yes or no. So that cannot be done directly on his side, right? Email can be sent, but the link has to be clicked and the button has to be clicked on this portal. OK, so uh, 
there can be uh, any way where you know uh, for example maybe a, um, a curl command or like something like that that will uh, directly uh, hit it and and it will move forward because for example for um, okay. a business user they may they may not want to like you know uh, come in here and then do it like so for like uh, that scenario through just uh, a link or s- like something like okay, that so basically that basically it's like uh, what i understand by your question it's like uh, for example business user you have your own portal for a business user where he is actually seeing all the notifications and something and when he clicks that button from there using apis can it be done that it can be called yeah yeah using apis it can be done okay right but that is like too much of overhead while like doing things for nothing to uh, make sure that the business user you know it, it's like just overkill of things so yes certainly but using apis and i don't think so it's a better way of doing it okay so thank you for the question uh, a very good question it was uh, and let's talk about the pipeline snippet generator we just spoke about it we just saw how it worked uh, we can certainly by the question which you asked you can certainly generate email as well you can just need to choose email step it will ask you who what when and you can just copy that snippet generate that pipeline script and uh, put it in your uh, pipeline file the next thing which i would like to talk about is multi branch pipeline okay now by the uh, picture if you see uh, we saw a pipeline code for a particular branch we were working on master branch that is not the ideal scenario right we never work on first we never work on master branch we always work on develop branch or feature branches uh, or hotfix branches etc right uh, master branch is our production ready branch and we all never uh, they, you won't find any scenario i don't see at least any uh, enterprise company using uh, only one repository to check in or repository not repository branch to check in and check out code there will be multiple things there will be multiple people working on different branches somebody would be working on a feature branch somebody working on a hotfix right so for that jenkins pipeline has created something called multi branch pipeline okay in that multi branch pipeline what happens it scans all the uh, branches of that particular repositories and ho- take ho- create automatically uh, create automatic jobs for them and we'll see how that works and it might happen that there are different pipeline for different branches okay so so let's try to create a multi branch pipeline and let's understand what i am talking about Uh, before that uh, andram like one question i have sure to, sure uh, the previous pipeline script we have written it right uh, can, can we execute the only one single step in the all the you know these many uh, like right steps in it? yes yes Not you can execute, writing all the steps i want to execute only the build step at the moment when something is a yes yes you Show can certainly that. so so if you see here like let me go to the code so you meant that in build step you want to run all these things right yeah only um, build step i want to execute from this is there any parameter to pass to yes it? yes so there is something called when parameter okay mm-hmm. so that when parameter is something where you defined that when something like this when a uh, maybe branch is master or branch maybe something else or maybe so there are different parameters which jenkins support like who triggered the build uh, what is the condition for this particular stuff etc etc so you can certainly put that when condition and if that when condition matches then only this stage will be executed so your question right that can we execute only one stage yes we can execute based on the conditions that i can write this when 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 in all the uh, blocks and based on my condition i can certainly run it and it will execute only those stages where the condition matches so that is really possible Okay. Is there any plugin to prefer it, like to give on the UI side? Only this step will get executed like that. Uh, I didn't get your question. I mean, is there any plugin, you know, to get the option in the 
UI said only, I'll pass my stage name and that will get executed only that particular stage. In configure. Uh, no, 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 you won't be able to do that. No. Okay, okay, thank you. So I will search for that. Only, so I thought. <laughs> no, that that won't be possible till the time there is a condition that you know what if maybe, uh, how do I say? Mm, just like I said, it could be branch, it could be something if else conditions which matches the criteria, then only you can skip it because you need to tell the stage. Why did you skip that particular stuff? Yeah, uh, having said that, thank you. Uh, thank let's you. create a multi branch pipeline. And we'll come to know what multi branch pipeline is once we create it. So uh, so we have gone through freestyle projects. We have gone through pipeline. And we have also gone through. Oh, no, we have gone through these two. Let's talk about the multi branch pipeline and the scenario which I talked about. It will take you to the configuration part and it will tell you. Kit. Uh, the repository name, right? Certainly. So let's take the repository name. Let's take the repository URL. And put it here. It's an open one. You don't have to bother about the other stuff. I built configuration, so it will look for a file called Jenkins file in all the repositories. Oh, sorry, branches here. So if you see there are around uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine branches here, right? So it will look around on those nine branches and it will look wherever it finds a file called Jenkins file. It will start creating it. So if you see it automatically scanned the moment I said yes, and if I click on the multi branch pipeline, my there were five branches where it actually found the Jenkins file and it created a job out of it. So we earlier what we did, we created one pipeline. We referred only master, right? But here what we did, we created one repository. Uh, we referred to one repository instead of only referring to master. We referred a repository. And the moment there is any check in in any of these branches, it will automatically pick up and it will start uh, running those particular jobs. So we got one, two, three, four, five jobs. And again, let's go to this log to see and understand what am I talking about? So it started scanning that repository. So it started scanning this repository. It checking branch test A. It found a Jenkins file met criteria because if you saw that's how we configured that uh, this is the uh, criteria that any any repository which has a file name as Jenkins file should be found. And for others, there would be like, no, it is not found. See here for test Java and other branches, Jenkins file was not found. It is not there, so it did not create it. Whenever you want to check for new refresh or something, you can actually click on scan multi branch pipeline. Now it will do the scan again. Usually we don't have to worry about it because the hooks are always working. The moment there is a check in inside that particular stuff, it automatically uh, runs this particular uh, pipeline and checks what jobs have been deleted or what uh, branches have been created and it automatically deletes and create the jobs from the Jenkins uh, portal. Uh, having said that, let me and this this uh, th there is also a scenario where you can actually see that master might be having different source repository and different uh, uh, what do you call uh, different ui or different steps right it might be it might happen that the jenkins file in ke branch or abc branch is having different uh, uh, steps so that is the reason we create multi oh, oh, just a minute battery is low yeah, that's the reason we create this multi branch pipeline to in order to make multiple jobs for a single repository. Now talking about we, we spoke about a lot of things about Jenkins scripted pipeline and Jenkins pipeline node, etc. Right, but if you see on the first job which we had pipeline job one, we still have something called uh, a scripted one. Although we have a declarative syntax, but we still have the. 
uh, the code inside this particular uh, script box. Let's cre actually create a new Jenkins file for it because it's what that's what the intent is to make the Jenkins file working. Let's go. There is always already a Jenkins file here. Jenkins file was nothing, but it is exactly what we saw earlier. Right, so I already have it, so I won't paste it, but what this time I'm going to do is. With the previous job. Yeah. I will edit this. And I will say instead of script, why don't you take it from source control? I'll say OK, take it from this repository. Oops. From this repository and uh, just run it. So now when we run it, it will be similar to what it was running earlier because the code is same. What we did, we just add a core of file called Jenkins file here and we just wrote the same content here. We just copied it. I mean, I didn't copy it now, but it was already there when I was creating the tests. It's, it's waiting for the deploy stage. And uh, Let's go to the. Same thing, same thing happened. Based on whatever you wanted to do or not. And in this multi branch pipeline, I don't know why this master is still being because it is stay waiting for me to deploy. Let me abort it. So I think let me delete this multi branch pipeline again and let me start a simple test again. Now what I do, I'll again create the multi branch pipeline. ML. Multi branch. Create. Give this repository URL. <laughs> Sources. Take it from GitHub. It is scanning and it is creating the uh, branches again. What I need to do is why I created, recreated it. The reason was I wanted to create a new branch. Let me create something called webinar. And what I expect is once the webinar branch has been created, I should see here. Sorry, I should see here it, the webinar branch. Right now, so if you see I didn't do anything, the hooks automatically fired and the webinar branch is automatically created. I did not have to go there and you know create a new webinar branch for it. So this branch is nothing, but this is actually a job which is running right now with the code which was inside it and it is waiting for my input to be approved or rejected. So that's how and this is the ideal scenario. A lot of organization works on multi branch pipeline because that is the scenario. You have one repositories, you have so many branches, so many people are working and that's how these many jobs and these many uh, scenarios have been created. Uh, any questions of the multi branch pipeline before I move ahead? Uh, the same thing like uh, how it works in the background, like it uses multiple demons to execute for one branch as like that or process ID it uses for one branch, like how it works. OK, so it will. Uh, so when you say it will, it will wait. So if you see right, if this uh, this multi branch pipeline jobs will be executed, but based on the availability of the node or the worker node, right? Mm -hmm. For example, if I run this job as well, again, all the jobs that will actually wait based on the available worker node or the 
other stuff which is uh, running directly on that particular server so it won't be like uh, so if you see both are running right now mm -hmm. in progress as well as this guy so that will actually uh, based on the worker node which has it has been assigned whether it has been master node or whether it has been some agent specific agent it will automatically execute okay okay, okay. Let me go to deep tech now. Okay, then there's a concept of shared pipeline libraries, and this is uh, useful when we are actually reusing the code. And if you see the definition, right, as a pipeline is adopted more and more projects in the organization, there are a lot of uh, reusable code. For example, you are sending an email, right? You are sending an email. You just need to pass parameters like maybe uh, uh, to whom, subject, text, etc. And in other software development practices also, we create common libraries. So this is similar to that. You create shared libraries or shared codes which you store in a repository and then you refer those repositories directly in your code what happens your code can be directly called and it can be always reused now let me go there and let me create a small uh, shared pipeline which i have already created so it shouldn't be much time consuming so on my github I have created a repository called shared lib shared lib and this is the structure of a shared library which uh, Jenkins pipeline uh, expects resources as uh, sources as well as variables in variables. If you go inside, I have written a function uh, a file called log.groovy. Basically this his, its job is just to log things and whatever parameters being passed. If you click on that, I have written a function called info as well as uh, warning in info it is doing nothing but it is whatever the message is being passed it is just putting it around uh, putting stars around it and just saying info and whatever the message is being passed right so this is the method similarly you can add a simple method called email here which will be email or posting things to other uh, communities etc you can just add that and you can reuse this particular code and how do we do that so this repository is already there i will go to manage jenkins I need to add that. I will go to configure systems. Configure systems and then here there will be an option called global pipeline libraries where I give it a name as shared hyphen library. I want to take the master branch version. So obviously this is master and then I choose where shall it refer to. So it is referring to a shared library which is on my GitHub repository. That's the only setting right now. Then I move ahead. And uh, in an example, let me take the pipeline job one example. Let's configure. OK, it's already taking it from here, so let's go to the. Or maybe let's change it here only. Excuse me. Let's take this pipeline script. Take the Jenkins file. And let's remove a lot of stages. There are a few stages which are really, really not needed right now. OK, and uh, parallel executable, etc. And I want to use the same function, which is library. So there is a snippet called a li library, and then you need to pass the library name as if you uh, you might have seen that I named my library as shared library in the configuration. 
and the branch which I want to use. If I want to use, if I'm doing some development, if I want to test that some other branches, I can just give that branch name. And then what I need to do in a script block, I need to just called log.info. So let me put that here. In steps, let me add a script. Sorry. Let me add a script. And in script, I just say starting my webinar. Just save it. And run it. There you go. So if you see whatever code has been written in that particular library that to put star around it, it actually called that URL. So if you see shared lib, so it actually called that shared library URL. It called that function and whatever was the output, it actually executed that. See, it got a message with name as starting my webinar. So it just put info and starting my webinar around it. So that's was all about the shared pipeline. So there, why there? So basically, what happens in organizational enterprises? We create a lot of reusable code, and a lot of people use that reusable code using the shared library. So create a function here, and then use that particular function in your script pipeline. So the best part, your pipeline script also or Jenkins file also becomes shorter and shorter because you are reusing the code. You don't have the bunch of code right now in the Jenkins file. You have that already here. You're just referring log uh, your function name which is log dot info and the message and accordingly it is being executed so that's how it is and let me go to the deck again okay. oops Not presenting. This should be good. Imran, we are not audible yet. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Cool. Sorry. I don't even know what part did you listen to. 
but did you okay did someone listen to the best practices when we started i'll i'll redo it then no problem okay so this was more about the best practices and uh, let's talk about the best practices use the pipeline uh, use the uh, real jenkins pipeline because try to use the jenkins pipeline file basically the jenkins file check it into the source control system uh, check it into the source control system and make sure that uh, you uh, 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 sorry make uh, make sure that you get it reviewed because that's how when you merge your code, merge your pipeline, then you will certainly come to know what are the good and bad points about it or what are uh, what are the security threats. Develop your pipeline as code. You are already doing it. Uh, although uh, do all the work within a stage. So certainly try to make sure that use stages for different purpose or uh, because that when you separate or when you group those common steps into stages, it is very easy for a person to understand what is the Jenkins pipeline is doing as well as a person to see on the dashboard where it has been stuck, what it has been doing. Uh, try to do all material with all material work within a node as in if you're working on a Linux box, try to do or try to run things off a Linux box. Try to if you're doing the Windows one, try to use the Windows node. Uh, work you can with a parallel step. That means you need to certainly make sure that you are using parallel step if needed. If there is no dependency, like we don't have to wait for something, try to use the parallel step because the execution will be really, really fast. Uh, acquire nodes within parallel step. Uh, so do acquire nodes when we say like you can use those multiple nodes in parallel step as well. Like for example, uh, running some tests on a Linux box and running the other tests on a Windows box. Use input within a node block. Sorry, don't use input within a node block. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, because that means uh, when you actually put the input blocks, uh, sorry, in input uh, options with the node block, then it creates ruckus and it gives you an error. Uh, wrap your inputs in timeout. So when I say wrap your inputs, you saw that timeout demo uh, where you were actually once the timeout was uh, uh, done, like once the timeout was expired, it automatically uh, broke the uh, build or maybe aborted the build, right? Uh, it might happen that you are waiting for input from the user and the stakeholder is busy and is not able to, you know, uh, come to the portal and do things. Then it will keep hanging around for a while just for waiting the waiting for the stakeholder or the user or human intervention to stop that particular build. So in order to do that, certainly make sure that you are using timeouts so that, for example, you give a timeout of one hour that in one hour, if the person or uh, stakeholder doesn't click that yes or no, it will automatically be aborted. So that you can certainly do. And uh, with that, we can certainly have more questions and uh, so i've i've linked uh, i've given a link to the actual documentation of jenkins which is like where you can find all the steps which i spoke about where you can find uh, all the options which we actually demoed you can certainly find it there but if you have any specific questions you can always connect to me or we can discuss it right now if we certainly have some scenarios yeah imran i have like i'm sorry like no asking. that's that's good that's what we are here for yeah so if you can, uh, if you could elaborate something uh, or a uh, uh, little bit uh, more about the how the, uh, know, the Docker uh, things can help in the this like uh, in the Jenkins pipeline, how we can write it, uh, like the general idea or guideline, how a pipe like uh, pipeline will looks like for the Docker deployment. Okay. So basically, it, it's more about this, right? There are two ways of doing it. One, using Docker. OK, so let's split it into two part the question. So the question is how do we leverage Docker for maybe building and deploying as well as using the Docker images in Jenkins pipeline? So let's first talk about okay. using the Docker images in Jenkins pipeline. OK, uh, mm -hmm. there is a snippet where like just like agent. If you if you see the first uh, slide of the presentation, there were mm -hmm. there were different parameters of agent where you can define a Docker option as well. And that mm -hmm. is about creating an agent or creating an agent on the runtime to make sure that your requirement is filled. For example, if I had do not have a Maven or maybe I want to run a Maven and I can spin up a container which can run Maven for me and then mm -hmm. my code will be executed on that. So that is one part. Second part, you already have a Docker container or a node running anywhere else and you can just connect that. You can pass it as a label that OK, uh, I want this particular Docker machine to run my job. 
that will be okay. done now third uh, the the second the actual second part of your question was can we build docker images right certainly you mm. can build docker images you can execute so with the docker plugin you can execute the docker commands like docker build right if you have the first step would be like downloading the source code from the repository mm -hmm. which will certainly have your docker file right mm -hmm. once your docker mm -hmm. file has been there it will download that docker file it will run the docker commands over it especially the docker build whatever tagging imaging etc you give mm -hmm. and once that has been done you will uh, uh, like the image would be created and on the same line on the shell script because see it is all about execute the same thing which you run on your shell prompt or uh, a linux box or a windows box whatever commands docker commands you run you just have to pass those same commands here right yes. after building the command you will maybe uh, the, the image has been ready you will try to push the image right certainly mm -hmm. you'll push it to maybe docker hub or maybe your customer custom registry of your organization so mm -hmm. that can be done so that is how it works so it is all about okay. executing those docker commands in this particular uh, uh, statements whether it is shell powershell whatever you use based on the jenkins pipeline we just mostly saw the shell commands, right? You can certainly yeah. use bash commands, bat commands. You can certainly use PowerShell commands, different things you can use. So I just mm -hmm. most focused on easier one so that it is very easy. And I uh, actually spinned up a Linux box. So it was uh, especially shell, shell, shell. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that helps. Thank you so much. much. Yeah, and if there is anything else you would like, like to know more or you discuss, you want to discuss about it, certainly please uh, contact me on the handle. I'll just be very interested in discussing that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Cool. Anyone else? And I'm really sorry, guys, for the technical glitches and sharing the screen and switching between the screens. I know it was annoying at a point of time, but um, apologies. Any questions before I hand it over to Priyanka? Was it? Uh, hello? Priyanka, are you there? Yeah. Hi, hi, Ma. Hello? I could hear you with a lot of disturbance, so. Hello? Uh, I can hear you, Priyanka. Yeah, I'm saying thank you very much for being a great speaker for our webinar. Hope we can organize such webinars in future as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe network issue is here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, so thank, thank you, you thank you, much. everyone. Yeah, and uh, thanks everyone for participating in this webinar. And I hope you like this webinar series. Most of you have uh, attended our all the webinars from this series. So we will uh, meet you in the in our next webinar series. Uh, it will be started in next November coming November. Thank you so much. If you have if you want the recording of this webinar, just visit our YouTube channel or just see us on our social media channel, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn or uh, Twitter. So we will help you with the recordings of this webinar. Thank you everyone. Thank you Priyanka. Thank you Imran. Thank, Thank you Imran. Priyanka.